Oh, I hope you're still recording. Welcome to today's video. This is what we've got in store for you. Hi guys, in this week's vlog we take the drone over to our local nature reserve to look very early in the morning for some rutting stags. Me and Emily go out picking some slows for our slow gin. We go over to my old man's and change his massive winner at the back. This is going to be amazing. We take the old Mavic Pro into the centre of a fireworks display. Oh my god! I also temporarily adopt my mum and dad's adorable border collie Jack and also use him as a bit of a dog model for some photos. I get involved in a repair cafe, don't worry we'll cover that later on. So guys that's what to expect in this week's vlog. Please subscribe, please like and please watch all the way through and comment at the end. Let's get on with the video. Right, so it's early doors. I'm getting the coffee. Where are those batteries? So it's a dark early morning start, getting all my camera gear ready. As you can see here, I'm getting my drone batteries all charged up. And I was going over to meet my mate Harry because apparently the deer and that are easier to see and easier to find when it's dark in the morning. So yeah, just getting everything packed. So what's happening is at the moment at this nature reserve, the stags, the boyos are going about trying to get a bit. <laughs> and uh, that means they run around making loads of noise. It also means that they can't hear us because they're so up for making love to some deer that they're just not listening. <laughs> And they're making such a racket, they don't care. And we're just gonna basically load up and get over there, so. If you want to know what a Panasonic HCX1 looks like, this is it, it's an absolute, it's an absolute beast. Really, really nice camera, so hopefully we can get some really good shots with this. I should really do a review on this bag, but I, I haven't really got around to it yet, but it's massive. I think you can take it on as hand luggage. And there you go, that's now got my tripod on there ready for us to film in a minute. Panasonic. Can you actually see me? <laughs> I normally sneak around like this. It's your usual get up. Yeah. <laughs> Stop chattering you to her. Right, so it's early. Can you see me and Harry? Wave to everyone, Harry. Morning. <laughs> right, so we're off. We've got to be quiet, so we're not going to say a lot of shit. As I'm good at that, as you know got to stalk about find these deer. It was virtually useless trying to get any kind of good footage in the dark. We waited for it to get a little bit lighter. Now you can see Harry for what he is, a complete lunatic dressed up in random camo clothing. One thing you're going to notice though is that he doesn't actually carry a lot while he's doing this. The one he's got in his left hand is his Canon with a massive 200mm lens in it and the one he's got in his right hand is I'm afraid to say the Panasonic that I've brought. We walked for a good hour trying to stay as quiet as possible and we could hear the males grunting and running up and down but we couldn't see anything and we couldn't see any deer either. So after a while with Harry knowing that I'd brought my drone with me, he decided that we'd probably made a bit too much noise and it was a good idea to send the drone up and see where the deer were. Oh, we can't find any deer. We're gonna send the drone up there to find them. It's a big good test of the drone in low light because it's still sort of twilight at the moment. Sorry about whispering. Right, here we go. So we'd see a deer from above and then it would sneak into some trees and then we'd have a fly about, try and find more deer. As you can see, I think the Mavic was struggling under this low light conditions and also because of the fact that it was a really murky, cloudy day as well. It was just struggling to see any. So we're flying about for a little while, then we find a little pack of deer that have sort of sat down, but they're obviously so scared of the drone that they just leg it as well. Finally, after about 10 to 15 minutes of flying, we find a deer out in the open, completely on its own. I thought, well, this is the chance to get the drone down low and the only thing the deer is going to do is run away from it. So this is the footage that we got. We didn't want to chase any deer or scare them too much so we stopped pretty quickly after a while. But have a look at these lovely photos that Harry has taken on this nature reserve in the past. I'd highly recommend you follow him on Instagram and I'll leave a link to his Instagram account below. I will go back, preferably on a crisp winter's morning, and get the footage that I want of a lovely stag to show to you guys very soon.
Right, so we are picking slows. Oh yeah, slows spelled S-L-O-E-S. -E uh, basically we're picking them because you can make slow gin with them. And that comes in pretty handy. It takes about two, two and a half months to make a decent slow gin, maybe three months. I've never been that good at waiting for anything. Near where we live, there's like loads of walks and stuff like that. There's lots of slow plants. So what you do, you get your slows, you get, what was it, like almond essence? Something like that, slows, almond essence if you want to be bit much with it um, and then you put like whatever little ingredients you want to do just to make your slow gin taste of anything else obviously gin and then loads of sugar put that in a bottle and there's an old tradition that every time you pass that bottle you're supposed to turn it upside down and then put it back again which is obviously just something to make you mix it um, and that is what we're doing so we're, the first thing you need to do is get slows and you need quite a lot so we're up here now it's chilly I forgot my hat Emily's properly sort of kitted out for this and I'm not at all for me September the end of September uh, is like I lament it a little bit oh, summer's going but once we've done the full crossover into autumn i love autumn as well i just love it i think it's wicked winter can just go screw don't have any time for it at all unless i'm going skiing again cool emily's nearly done the whole the whole tree now well done em. we're nearly done and go hell yeah i'd better get on and help her otherwise she's gonna get grumpy gut aren't you <laughs> let's leave me and bumheads now to get as many slows as possible and move on to the next segment of this lovely vlog don't worry we'll be going back to the bottom later on Everybody, after my mummy and daddy's mummy and daddy to uh, basically change a window over. This is what I call family job because Jamie here is getting paid and I'm getting sweet FA. So, yeah, we're on our way over there now, uh, just driving down. We're gonna get over there, it's gonna be wicked. So, Jamie, if you could smoke, mate, at least have the you window open. Well, you might want to keep them on the window in the background. So my mum and dad live about 20 miles away and they've been waiting for us for a few weeks to come and do this job. I, uh, I think they were pretty shocked that we actually turned up to do it in the first place. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. How are you? Hello, Mum. Hello, Doug. Hello, Doug. Hi, you, Jamie. Hello. Oh, the house is a circle. It's just trying to chase him. Hi, Dad. How's it going, Joel? Dad, Jay. Hello. Hello, mate. Oh, yes. Where's those cats? Where's those cats, Jack? Right. <laughs> we got to work taking the old frame out and getting the new one in while Jack stared at the camera like a weirdo. Things are going well, aren't they, Jamie? We're getting there. Oh, getting there, mate. The shining. Things are going very well. Yeah. New frame in, old frame out. Jack? Jack? Happy dog? Yes, you are. The whole job was fairly straightforward and we got it all leveled out, got the new doors in and as you can see we've got our suckers on there that were brilliant and also Jack just loves playing, he will not leave you alone while you're trying to do a job like this. Also at this point I heard a familiar voice coming from the kitchen. Mother, actually watching last week's vlog. Me and Emily got slightly delayed in this place and then had to visit a slide on the next night. Thanks mum. I hope you enjoy your new window you two, I expect a very nice Christmas present. Still to come, we've got the bottling of the slow gin, the fantastic firework display, the weird world of repair cafes. But before that, we're going to take Jack out for a quick walk through a lovely glade and get some great photos of him. So guys, there's always multiple ways that you can film scenes and stuff. I've got to say, getting up early in the morning, especially this time of year when you've got very heavy dews and therefore you've got a lot of moisture in the air, the sun comes off that moisture beautifully, especially if you're filming through onto the river, you've got all that complex light coming up off the river itself. But also you can film scenes like what we've got behind us here. I'm gonna get the crane locked into lock mode. So now I'm just controlling it with my joystick. Zoom, 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 zoom. The good thing about having a crane is that you can get a shot like this. Look at that how zoomed in that is and then if we actually begin our shot maybe we want an out of focus foreground look at our subject we've got now as well so now i'd say i'm pretty happy with that so now i'm just gonna draw that across like so a few more minutes walking and i arrived at a little avenue of trees where i plan to take a few photos of jack i'm looking to uh get a shot of now, I'll be honest with you, I've made a cardinal mistake yet again. I haven't got enough battery in the cannon, so I'm not going to have much time to get these shots right. But that doesn't matter because he wants to go out. Let's set the camera up and we'll see what sort of shots we can get, okay? Mm -hmm. 
it takes a few minutes to pair my phone with the Canon and then get set up ready so I can take the shot and also get Jack sorted out. He is an absolute dream to take photos of because he's so well trained and so well behaved. These are the raw image files of the photos that I took and I took quite a few of the same type purely because I knew that was running low on battery. Then I popped them back onto my computer at Photoshop and a little bit of post editing work and they came out like this. I was really pleased with the results in these pictures and it put me in a really good mood to tackle the repair cafe later that day. So it's Saturday morning guys and I'm doing this thing I totally forgot about called Repair Cafe. So that's when you get people come to the village hall, your local village, and bring stuff in that they want fixed. So that's what we're going to do right now. Hopefully no one will want me because last night I had a few beers. There we go. Morning, so I'm a bit late. So the most important aspect of any repair cafe is a very healthy supply of black coffee, which you need at all times. Now how it's laid out is there's a table for each person, so there's like a seamstress over there, with the guy next to me is like well into his electrics and PC boards and stuff like that. Some people just selling stuff over there, which is the first time that's happened. And the idea is people come in and get their stuff fixed for free. Nine times out of ten, you're not going to be able to fix it because it's stuff like uh, my bath fell in half, can you glue it together again or something like that. It's a very glue based uh, fixing regimen here. Once you've hopefully fixed it or something like that, there's a table over there where they give a donation um, we're not getting paid or anything like that, it's just something that we do in the local village, it's a bit of a laugh. It's only like once every three or four months and you just get to meet people you don't usually meet in your local community. So let's see how it goes guys. If I fix something I'll be absolutely amazed. First things first, coffee. Any thoughts I had of having a chilled out day were quickly dashed when I saw how many people were waiting for stuff to be repaired. Emily instantly got down to gluing things together like mad, whilst I tackled my first job from a lovely lady who had some Christmas lights that hadn't worked for three years. So this is my first victim, Annette. Annette, say hello to everyone. Hello everyone. <laughs> <laughs> These were festive lights. They were expensive, about over 25 years They look very ago. nice. Are they glass? But, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. I did buy some new bulbs, thinking it was a bulb that's blown, but, um, Fusey fuse. I've bought a pack of three out fuses and tried all four of them. None of them work. <laughs> I'll try and get it on the front page of the village newsletter. Oh, <laughs> see? <laughs> Incentives already. I'm a dab hand at the old electronics, you know, and I kind of found out that a lot of the light filaments weren't properly touching their connectors. A few seconds later. After literally hours of exploration, we've been here, it's actually now Sunday. We've been here all <laughs> night trying to fix this. Let's see. Yes! How about that, eh? Hey? That's lovely. Through deduction, we fixed the lights. That's we fixed the lights. I'm How? so happy. You're so happy. I think I might go down the pub. Really? <laughs> In all honesty, it was crazy some of the stuff that people brought in to be fixed because some of it you just thought there's no way this is going to happen. Like the German dude Ralph who brought in a smashed table fan. All the impellers were broken, there was no way I was going to fix it. He also brought in a vacuum cleaner that every time he turned it on it just smoked everywhere. I cleaned the brushes out on it but after that there's not really a lot I could do. There were some unusual and interesting successes as well. This guy over here fixing this small clock, it's something I'd never be able to do and it was fascinating watching him do it and sharing his skill and actually Actually getting these things working. At the same time, it was somewhat humbling because I fixed a cup. Good luck getting the gaffer tape mark off. Oh yeah, yeah, just got to rub this off. At the end of the day, we had a sheet of all the things we'd fixed. It's a great day because it gives you the opportunity to meet people that you don't often see in your community. Young and old talk about how they're going to fix a certain item, and it's just a really rewarding experience all round. Guys, as you can see. You're on that camera down there. Guys, I've left my uh, my main vlogging setup back at the studio. I completely forgot. I've basically worked like a load of nights lately getting a, uh, a set set up for a film that we're making for another client. But at the moment, it's fireworks night and I've got my old Mavic. I'm not gonna be taking up the Mavic Pro 2. That would be mental. But I'm gonna take up my old Mavic right up into the center of those fireworks. Um, I've only just decided to do that now. If I'd have planned to do this, I would have brought all my proper vlogging gear with us, but as it is, I've just got my phone uh, that we're on at the moment. So let's see what it comes out like. I'm just charging up the charger at the moment. I'm just gonna pop down the pub quickly. I'm gonna bite back, get the drone once it's charged up, and then fly up into what could be its very final flight. Let's hope not though. I mean, we could get some great footage tonight. So let's see how it goes. 
So I started the flight fairly far away from where the actual fireworks are going off and I was kind of attempting to get the Mavic to automatically focus on the fireworks themselves and it was really, really struggling to do it. But I got it in a bit closer and this is the footage that we got. <laughs> There were a couple of moments where we hit a couple of shockwaves when we were going in and out of the actual explosion area, I guess. But the Mavic seemed to sort of live up to it pretty well. The only time it was struggling was when it was focusing. Thanks for watching this vlog guys all the way to the end it's been brilliant i've enjoyed every minute of making this week's video it's been very outdoorsy and we've got a few brilliant things coming up including hopefully a tour around a stasi prison in berlin so please do hit that subscribe button hit that like comment below and i'll see you in the next times of james video also there's links to all my gear in the description below so if you want anything that we've been using in this video just click on those related links and you should find it there on amazon